And welcome back to tonight's politics panel. With me are Mark Harold, Nicole Williams, and Kyle Peterson. Let's get back to it. The Supreme Court today granted cert. Fancy way of saying yes, we will hear the case. And actually, this is a case that the Obama administration wanted them to hear because they had lost it at the lower court, if mm -hmm. my recollection is correct. And uh, basically, what's going on here is Hobby Lobby, which is a for profit corporation. It's owned by a family called the Green Family, who are fundamentalist Christians. And as fundamentalist Christians, you know, they're entitled to run their business pretty much any way they want. They won't sell shot glasses, for example. Uh, we don't believe in shot glasses. Uh, can't, can't buy a hop, you know. Um, but, and uh, Sunday, everybody, you know, nobody works on Sundays. Ain't going to happen. You know, it's the holy day. Um, they should have a conversation with Seventh-day Adventists. But in any case, um, but now they're saying that as a corporation, they can have a religion, and that religion is protected under the First Amendment of the United States. And I'm real confused. I mean, when, what's next? Corporations can marry, and then if they can marry, do we have, does that solve the whole issue of marriage equality nationwide? Because corporations, as far as I know, are all the same gender. Or are they different, or you know, what? I mean, where is this going? What am I missing here? Mark, let me, you're, you're an attorney here, you're, I'm, I'm, and, a, and a libertarian. Yeah, what, what's this, I mean, looking at this through the sort of a political lens, it's a risky move because when, when you're the appellate court uh, upholds the law or overturns the law. It's really only good for a certain jurisdiction. It's either the District of Columbia, certain states, territories, wherever that circuit is. Well, if it's the District of Columbia, it's, just, it's, it's functionally it's, the whole United States if it's a federal law. Well, it's a federal law, but it's in the District of Columbia jurisdiction. I mean, there's Ninth Circuit, Fifth Circuit, whatever it is. Right. So when you tee it up, I mean, when you go for the circuit grant, you're teeing this up. This can become the law of the land, and if obviously the Obama administration loses, it's going to be closer to the election. It's going to undercut, and it's going to bring the whole Obamacare back into the political sphere. I think it's going to be there anyway. Oh. Well, I think this is about Citizens United in a lot of ways. And one theory I have, yeah, I agree with you. one theory I have is that, you know, President Obama scolded the Supreme Court over Citizens United in the State of the Union. Yeah. And I think that the, the CERT grant has to be this close in time. I don't think this is a CERT grant to undercut Citizens United. If I'm, you know, the hardest thing to predict is the future. But if I had to guess, my guess is that they're going to bring this up and it's going to reaffirm the basic underpinnings of Citizens United corporate personhood in the First Amendment and different parts of the First Amendment. And, and this is a risky move for the Obama administration because if they, if they follow the appellate court, it becomes the law of the land. At this point, it was limited to basically one jurisdiction, one of the 11 circuits. Do you think this is more Sam Alito getting back at the president? You know, he mouthed back at the president during the right. State of the Union. Do you think this is more Sam Alito getting back at the president? Or do you think that this is more the court simply saying, uh, you know, we've planted our flag on this notion that corporations are persons? And we are going to stand. We're going to stand and die on this mountain. I don't know if the entire court's going to stand and die on the mountain. I have to admit, I didn't well, look. Five. Yeah, there's basically five, and then there's also the part that certain justices look in certain jurisdictions as to whether they can get the votes and bring it up for cert, mm -hmm. and the way it does. Very few cases are granted cert, mm -hmm. but on this one, it, I think it could be that. I really do. In the back of their minds, I really do think they got scolded on Citizens United. They've been kind of laying in wait, and this is payback. I don't think they grant cert to overrule these basic underpinnings. If I have to look at this cert grant, I, I think it's to reaffirm the Citizens United okay. basic holding. And when, when we say we keep saying cert here, what, what that means, basically. Basically, a certification, right. a sertori actually is yeah. the Latin word, but, but basically, yes, we will take the case. We will, yeah. uh, Nicole. Right. I find it very interesting and surprised that they did take the case. And mm -hmm. I, of course, I'm hoping that they do not go as broadly as to say that a corporation is allowed to dictate what you know, the type of health care that their employees can provide, that they can provide to their employees. I feel like this is a little overreaching to sit there and say that a corporation can deny providing their employees contraception, contraception if they're going to provide health care in general to their employees. That's basically they're telling their employees how to live their lives in a sense. And I, I have serious issues with that. I think that if you're a corporation and you want to provide health care to your employees, then you have to provide health care to your employees. And part of that has has to do with health care for a woman. You know, contraception is just basically an extension of women's health care and women's reproductive and rights. Half of all women who take uh, hormonal birth control do not do so for, for birth control. Exactly. They, they, they do it for, you know, for, for health purposes. Right. And so, so I, I just find what this particular employer doing, is doing is very overreaching, a little too broad. I think Kyle, it's a little broader. Kyle, than there's a, uh, the, you know, the, the, the glib response, I think, is, hey, you know, if they choose not to shoot, to serve shot glasses based on the religious principles, nobody's arguing that they have to, 
I mean, you know, shot glasses aren't a protected class. It used to be back in the Old South, people would use that as an argument for segregation and things. You know, oh, it's my religious. But there's nothing, you know, nobody's arguing this. But this doesn't have to do with what they're selling. This has to do with how they're conducting themselves with regard to their employees. Well, I think that the Isn't issue... Isn't that a whole different category? Well, I think that the issue is a lot messier than you're making it sound. So there's several cases out there. The Hobby Lobby one is the one that the Supreme Court has chosen to take. Um, but, but I would bring uh, people's attention to a different one. There's a, there was a, a, a Catholic group of Catholic charities uh, in Pittsburgh that recently got an injunction um, saying that they did not have to, until the case is, is settled, did not have to comply with the mandate. Um, and, and what the bishop in question, he said, faith without works is dead. And the judge who heard the case said he was basically being asked to sever the Catholic Church into the, the portions that um, are involved in worship and the portions that are involved in works, and he couldn't do it. So the, the Hobby Lobby case is, is a little stickier, but I think it's a lot more messy than you're making it sound. No, that's interesting. I mean, the, 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 the whole Catholic thing is, I mean, I could flip that upside down and say, um, if you're a church and you want to run a hospital, then you have to run a hospital according to the rules of hospitals. I mean, there are, there are churches that believe in healing by the laying on of hands. Mm -hmm. And if somebody shows up at your, at your hospital that your church runs and they're in the middle of a heart attack and you get everybody together and say, oh, let's all pray for this guy and he dies, right. I think you've got a case. Mm -hmm. I think you've got a problem. So, you know, that just, uh, I, you know, I think that judge is wrong. I think if you're, if you're in the hospital business, you, you abide by the rules of the hospital business. No, Period. fair enough. End of discussion. But, but there are several um, cases out there, and, and the issue is more broad than simply That's why I think they employees. took this case. I, I'm with Mark right. on this. I think so they I'm took this case because they, they want to all. affirm Citizens United. Mm -hmm. This has very little to do with religion or religious rights or religious freedom. Right. Um, this has to do with Citizens United, and it's going to be a backdoor way of whacking Obamacare because... Because uh, I, I think, frankly, Thomas, not Thomas, uh, uh, Roberts, mm -hmm. the only reason that he did not strike down Obamacare is he was concerned about his legacy, but he's now still having to deal with all the right-wing flack from that. And he's probably not getting those big six-figure speaking fees that, that Thomas and Scalia get at all the, all the right-wing gigs. And I think he's still doing okay, though. Probably, yeah, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. Uh, okay, same-sex marriage. During a recent appearance on Bloomberg TV, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, uh, who I, no doubt is going to be running for president, said that his state had a healthy mix of laws both discriminating against gay Americans and affirming their equality. Check this out. The Senate, with some Republican support, passed a bill banning discrimination against gays. Should the House do the same? Well, again, I haven't looked at that particular bill. I can tell you in Wisconsin, we've had anti-discriminatory laws that are very similar to that for more than 30 years, and they worked quite effectively. So We're also a state that has a, a constitutional amendment that defines marriage. So it's marriage similar as one to the man, Wisconsin bill. The House bill should should be something. That yeah, but it is. I mean, we've had not had problems okay. with that. We've we've had no problems. Or I should say no limited problems with that. At the same time, we still have a constitutional amendment that defines marriage. There's a healthy balance. There. Governor, let me ask you one. This guy is the perfect candidate for president. Those were the most. That was the biggest word salad of weasel words that I've ever heard in my whole entire life. First of all, you're coming on Bloomberg TV to talk about a topic and you say, oh, gee, I haven't even bothered to read it. <laughs> Come on. I mean, does anybody, anybody believe Scott Walker on that for even a second? But it sounds like, you know, well, it doesn't even sound like what he's saying is uh, we have no problem in our state with people who are gay being discriminated against, but we also have this constitutional amendment that specifically discriminates against them, but everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Can anybody make sense out of this for me? No? It, it doesn't make sense, honestly, Tom. I mean, I have friends of mine who live in Wisconsin who are LGBT, and they would like to, you know, to have the same protections that their friends in Massachusetts and California and the District of Columbia still have, and, you know, getting married and their marriage being recognized by the state of Wisconsin. Well, protection in the workplace. I mean, that's what Ed knows Right. About. And also, too, yes, they have this law in Wisconsin with regards to discrimination. However, it's also been shown that they haven't been enforcing this law, and there have been reports of people being discriminated in the workplace in the state of Wisconsin. And the state of Wisconsin, the Republican-controlled government of Wisconsin, is not enforcing their discriminatory uh, statute that they have. Well, the, the, the enforcement is the responsibility of Scott Walker's office. It's the executive right, branch. And, that right, and that's what I'm saying. His office... He, he's not doing it. They're not doing it. He's not doing it. So...
Kyle? Well, I agree with you that it's probably a political position and that Scott Walker is probably not being as forthright um, about his opinions as he might be. Shocking! A politician <laughs> who's not forthright. Right. It's like, holy cow. But I, I would say that there's something to be said for um, letting things, taking some time to consider this. I mean, the thing, just to do a little bit of conservative anthropology, I mean, the thing that most conservatives object to um, is the notion that we can take these institutions that developed organically over thousands of years and we can sit down in a boardroom next Thursday and redefine them and, um, you know, strike certain sections well, that we don't define like. define and redefine. I mean, there was a time yeah. when the Catholic Church actually did marry gays. That, and homosexuality you know, sure, sure. has been around for thousands and thousands sure. of years. But, but. but the, the, the thing that conservatives <laughs> object to is that this idea that we can change things and not expect any flack from them. I mean, um, the, the institution of marriage used to be a whole lot more about duties and rights and responsibilities, um, and now it has been redefined by the culture, I blame Walt Disney for some of this, um, to be about fleeting emotions and feelings, um, and, and I think yeah, we've no, reaped, reaped uh, I, I want, we're, we're down to 90 okay. seconds, I want to get Mark in on this. Isn't this, isn't marriage equality the most conservative position? Marriage is a lifelong commitment. This is, this seems to me like this is the most conservative thing you can do. It very much is from a, a point that the, the government should stay out of all marriage, not just uh, same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriage, well, marriage should not well be, yeah, same-sex marriage should not be discriminated against. The, the, he's definitely, he wasn't ready for the question. He needs a much better talking point if he runs for president. But the bottom line here is part of the legal problem that they have is that legislation that's anti-discriminatory can be reviewed either way under some type of state or, or federal uh, equal protection clause, even though homosexuality or same-sex um, couples aren't don't as a suspect class. The problem they have is when it gets into a constitutional amendment, it's not eligible for the same type of judicial review. So you get into this thing where you have law, you're comparing sort of apples and oranges with constitutional amendment and, and laws that law. have been enacted that can be repealed. But I absolutely disagree with that constitutional amendment. There should be pr protection. Uh, there should not be just gender distinction for marriage. However it's defined, I think the government should stay completely out of it. But same-sex uh, couples should be allowed to marry to the same degree that heterosexual couples can.